All right, gonna start getting this NXS design suspension installed. Um, so these items came back from the powder coater and I have to do stuff like scrape the inside here where that, there's an extra, I don't know, like half a millimeter or something of powder coat on the, where the ball joints go. And then like here where the shock bolt goes in, it it's like it doesn't, it doesn't really want to go. Like the coating is just preventing it from inserting. So I got to drill that out to the correct size again. Um, see like flakes around the edges of uh, where the bushings go. Those types of things I kind of grind down. So anyways, uh, I did one already. That's the front lower control arm. I did one already back here on the workbench. And um, basically I just grind those edges clean. I uh, insert the, uh, the bushings. The NXS design kit comes with all these bushings. Uh, there's certain sizes. This, this is, there's a bunch of these for the front A-arms. And then there's some other different sizes and shapes for the rear A-arms. So you gotta kind of figure out where those go. It's pretty obvious. It's not hard to figure out. And then um, these are factory parts, these bushings um, that I purchase. I just get extras because I want nice fresh new ones. Um, little grease zerks these thrush washers. I get all of these new and also new ball joints. Here's the part numbers if you want them. Um, I, uh, I buy these things new. It adds up. It's like $300 if you get all of this stuff uh, just for, from, the, from some sort of factory parts provider, OEM parts provider. I use um, Rocky Mountain ATV sometimes uh, or, or most of the time. Sometimes I'll use um, Babbitt online, and then sometimes I'll just, I'll use like one of my engine builders, somebody like Weller, one of the race shops. They don't necessarily stock as much stuff in there, uh, in, in stock as far as OEM parts, but a lot of times they'll have like parts for, for things that they deal with often, you know what I mean? So, so maybe it's things like these, I've never bought these from them, but uh, you know, they do long travel kits often, so they probably stock lots of these types of things. And then the ball joints, stuff like that. I don't know if, if they keep those in stock. But anyways, point is, uh, you can get them. So this is what it looks like. All nice and fresh. Um, as you see there, I just drilled out that. So the shock uh, bolt goes in. Just uh, I use a grinder to kind of to, to get these these edges to get that blue, that extra flack off. Um, and then this is a ball joint press. Uh, it's a little kit. I think I got it at Harbor Freight. It was cheap, super cheap, like $25, I don't know, $50, something like that. And then um, I use the ball joint press for this, and of course for the ball joint. And then for these bushings, I push these in with this is a press, uh, either got it at Northern Tool or got it at um, Harbor Freight, but it's pretty inexpensive. I don't know, maybe a couple hundred bucks, something like that. This is pretty much the only thing I use it for is pushing in these bushings. So anyways, uh, this is what one looks like completed. I'm going to go ahead and install it on the car, make sure it, it moves properly and make sure my bushings are, are tight enough. If you don't get those compressed all the way in then um, they're too wide to fit in the hole uh, or in the slot where they belong on um, on the car you know right there so um, um, the first time I ever did a long travel kit I did that I didn't I didn't grind off the powder coating and it added like a millimeter of width and you'd be amazed how much that throws everything off so anyways um that's it. I'm going to get another one out and I'll kind of take some video while I do it so you get an idea of what, what there is to it. Got to be careful not to take off any of the metal really.
You gotta keep the uh, the surface nice and flat. You don't wanna grind off any more metal than than is there. Just kind of getting the color off that where the powder coating is on the end. stopper whenever they whenever they powder coat they put some plugs in there so it's like a little plastic cone anyway so we got to just dig that out and then grind it off so okay so anyways I'm gonna do that same thing on all the ends These bushings that are provided by NXS Designs, they're extremely lightweight. I don't know if they're aluminum or titanium. I'm not really sure. He does uh, supply various titanium options for their kits. Um, it's kind of neat uh, that you can actually get the NXS Designs long travel kit completely made out of titanium. Of course, it's expensive, but for those people that want absolutely the best and the lightest etc you can you can get that this kit is not that way i've never bought one of the titanium ones i consider doing it on my first car but um yeah i didn't do it mostly at that time mostly because uh it, to to it would take forever um he had these chromoly kits in stock but it would take like i don't know several weeks at the time uh, you know, to, to get the titanium kit made. So I just didn't do it. Anyway, so here we are. I'm putting these bushings in. Um, this is a factory. Um, I don't know what this is called. Um, factory collar or whatever, uh, um, bushings. So this is the part number. Um, the front eight are all the same there's two in each upper and each lower so what i do is i just kind of use it to line up this bushing uh correctly and um then i go put it on the press once i get everything kind of lined up this is harder than you think it is it it it, it or it, it's harder than than i initially thought it would be um because you can very easily get these out of alignment um so i just kind of get them started i don't really do anything forceful until i know it's lined up because once you start one wrong you can almost never get it square again and if there's something that's not clean if there's no burrs or if there is burr or something something like that all of that really affects the way it lines up so i just kind of get them in there and then I use this to Okay, so basically I have each bushing started with that metal cylinder going through as you can see there, it's just, it's it's loose. You can slide that stuff back and forth. So now I'm gonna take it over to my press and uh, squeeze it down. And, and I leave that metal piece in there so that it lines it up while it's being pressed. So there's still a little bit of a gap there and there. Um, 
I'm, what, what's happening is I'm hitting that steel, it's a collar by the way, that steel collar on the inside. So I leave it in there so that everything gets lined up nice. But that is in fact the limit of which I can compress with that thing in there. So I, I just take it out now and then I give it like one more millimeter, uh, if even that, to get that to get that last little gap out. See that one more little gap there between the bushing and the A arm right there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push this collar out of there to do that. Okay, so I pulled that collar out. It's just open there. So I'm just going to give it one more little squeeze just to get that extra little, I don't know, it's not even a millimeter. I don't know, maybe it is a millimeter, something like that. There we go. see those bushings are right up against the a-arm and uh, should be nice and yeah So the ball joint um, just needs to be pressed in. I, I use a uh, cheap little kit that I got, again, I think from Harbor Freight or something. Uh, this is a OEM ball joint. I just get new ones. I think you could press out your factory ball joint out of your A-arms if you wanted to, but I don't waste my time on that. Plus, if your vehicle is used at all, then um, you might as well put new new joints in um so the ball joint kits come come with or the ball joint tool kit comes with all these different size rings i just kind of found one that fits it's extremely tight you got to be sure not to rip this this boot um but i just kind of put it on here ahead of time making sure that i'm not binding or kinking the boot in there at all um, I kind of twist it while I'm putting it in and to the point where I end up with this metal on metal surface. Make sure you got it turned the right way. Um, in this case, this is the shock attachment pointing up. This goes down. You can reference your car if you want. Um, fits nice and tight in there. where you need three hands. Or 
five hands. I assume a clamp of some sort would help, like if you had a, a vise to put the A-arm in uh, or something like that, that would help and it'd probably also help you keep it a little more in line. You don't want to press this thing in crooked, of course. I'm sure that happens. Okay. So just eyeballing it, I think I'm pretty much there. I'm uh, might be off a little bit. And I use an impact. I just use a Milwaukee um, 18 volt impact. Uh, this one uses a 22 millimeter. And I got a dead battery, of course. All right, so it looks like I'm going in a little crooked. I'm going to try to square that up. I'm good. Yeah, it looks like I'm okay. It's slow going, but I mean, I guess you gotta want that. to a different impact with a charged battery. As you can see that gap gets pretty tight. Once it's kind of metal on metal, I don't I don't want to overpress it. But I want it to pull in all the surfaces so that they're mating well. Pretty tight. It's good all the way around. There it is. As you can see, that gap is nice and tight now. Um, now it's time to just put a little, th uh, there's a clip, a clip that secures the top. I like to try to squeeze the clips down. Um, I don't think this is really necessary. If you feel it seat, um, but for me, I feel like maybe it needs help, kind of, kind of getting into its seat sometimes. Uh, perhaps I don't have the ball joint pressed in enough, or whatever the case may be. But uh, I try to get it where it needs to be and then I actually kind of try to try to cinch it down 
There you go, see that, how it kind of popped in, that one little last thing. So it is kind of a tight spot, um, but now I know for sure that it is in the, in the groove all the way around the way that it's supposed to be. Anyways, nice and clean. So uh, now I'm just gonna put in some grease certs. I don't really grease anything yet. Um, sometimes I put a little dab before I slide these things in. I put a little dab on, but um, um, I'm, I'm gonna, I didn't need to. Everything felt good, so I'm going to uh, put the grease certs on, put these little thrust washers on, and then uh, put it on the car. So you can reference your car before you take it apart. Um, or just look in the manual or the, the, the service book. Some of the grease zerks are different for different positions. This, some of them are angled like this. Uh, the angled ones are basically to get it into, uh, you know, where there's a tight spot. Um, in this case, like the headlight assembly or something is above the upper A-arm. So there's an angled grease zerk um, that's there. And then the other one is straight. And I've seen some Yamaha cars come with these, I guess they're like chrome or chromoly, like tool steel zerks. And then others have like a black finish on them. Uh, so I don't know what the differences are. When you tighten them, you don't really have to tighten them much. When you tighten them, two things that I pay attention to is to make sure that it's not bottoming it out on that collar in there. Uh, I've had some make contact with four, and if it does that, I just kind of back it out, you know, half a turn or something. And then another thing is you want to make sure the angled ones are turned in such a way that you can get your grease gun on them. So, all right, and now just put on these little thrush washers. for these things. Those rubber gaskets kind of, when they're dry, they, they kind of stick. So if you give them a little spin, it helps. And on some of this, you can use some assembly lube or a little dab of grease or something on them. I don't like to do that because my car gets dirty. <laughs> Uh, you get a bunch of sand and everything's stuck to all the all the little parts that are exposed. So I'll put dabs on internals, you know, like inside there or something like that when I'm putting it together. And then um, once it's together, I, I just shoot grease and everything, you know, the way it's supposed to. And I don't like to over grease because it just it blows out these seals. Uh, some people just sit there and pump and pump and pump until grease just bleeds out. And that's actually causing a bigger problem. I know on the X3s, um, that's a big deal. People over grease them, their bearings and things. And all it really does is opens up a gap in the seal. So uh, you just put, I don't know if these are completely dry, you put a few a few squirts, maybe three or four squirts of grease in there. Um, and as the car moves, it kind of starts getting where it needs to be. So, all right, so this is a completed arm now. Um, ready for ready for install on the car. Uh, it takes a, I don't know, takes me 30, 40 minutes on on each front arm to, uh, to get all of these things in. And that's counting grinding off powder coating. So if you already have them powder coated or if they're already, um, uh, you know, stuff like that's already cleaned up, then uh, you don't have that problem. All right, so I have one side on. Um, I broke one of these grease certs, so I uh, gotta wait a little while for one to come in. But other than that, this side's, it's not torqued down, but it's in here, it's installed. Um, I, uh, as you can see there, everything went together pretty good. There's no real issues. Um, when you're when you're initially sliding the a arms in, there's a bit of uh, lining up to do sometimes. 
uh, uh, that that I kind of you just kind of have to put some put some leverage on the end of the uh, on the end of the arm to to push it and get your bolts all the way through. Um, it has I wouldn't say it has resistance, but as you can see, it's not like the, those those bushings are tight enough that they are, that it's not dropping just with the weight of the knuckle on it. Um, it moves freely. There's no real binding. There's no real, um, I guess, like screeching or squeaking or anything like that at all. And it can go pretty far up and down. But the fact that it's holding its own weight is kind of surprising to me. I feel like they're normally pretty free just sliding around. But anyway, as you can see, I don't have anything tight yet. Ball joints and stuff are just got the castle nuts kind of laced on them. So anyway, so that's one side. Uh, so I'm going to set down the camera here, and put together this other side. Um, as you can see, I've got the Turner, Turn, Turner Eagle axles. These are, um, I forget what line they are. They only make one model for the fronts. For the back, I think they have like three different models. Um, they have a big bell option, they have a regular bell, and then they have these new, like, 500 horsepower compatible models. But okay, so this is gear oil. It's this stuff that um, Weller Racing recommends. Uh, it's it's specifically made for differentials and transmissions, I guess. But I use it in the front and the rear differentials for the Yamaha. Uh, before I put the axle in, I always take a take a little bit and, and, and put it on the on the splines. Just just a drop is all it takes and then I kind of rub it around. Uh, just to make sure it you know is covered there and that and also it helps it you know go in as well. So the Omaha axles slide in and out pretty easy. Um, if you've ever done this on an X3, it's a nightmare. I have not done it on an X3 but I've heard of all kinds of stuff. So that's so all there is to it. Just line up the splines and you just line up the splines and then you just plunge it in. Um, here's the factory hub. I'm holding a lot of weight up while doing this, but it's pretty quick and easy this way. You can like put the axle in with one of the ball joints in and stuff like that if you want to, but I'm not. So the tie rods, um, Weller recommends, uh, I think they give us a measurement. Anyway, some, something like halfway out. Um, I, I believe it's three eighths, maybe half an inch of, of thread showing. And actually I think they recommend more thread showing on one or the other. Um, this is all adjustable afterwards. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and more or less center it, I guess. Um, and of course, when we're done, we adjust the toe and everything. It's pretty handy to have like a block of wood to prop up under this arm or something to hold up weight. But as you can see, this side falls on its under its own weight. That other side stays up, so uh, I don't know, maybe I tighten those bolts more. Maybe the bush, one of those bushings is crooked. I'm not sure. Something like that. But um, anyways, I will uh, tighten these bolts. It's a 17 millimeter bolt with a 19 millimeter nut. I probably should have done this a minute ago, but this is probably why this side's loose. Ratcheting wrenches, just super handy for stuff like this. You have room for a socket and a ratchet anyways, but I like using wrenches when you're perpendicular to the drive. 
feel like it's more direct. And here's one of the reasons I should have. So I'm going to get the book out and find the torque values of uh, what all of this is supposed to be at. Of course, I'm getting that torque down. Yeah, so there's a little bit more resistance, but still less than the other side of getting those on. Okay. So there's most of the front end together. Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get the book, get the torque wrench out, and then we'll start uh, getting this stuff kind of squared away. I might go ahead and put oil in the differential just because I got it out, and um, that's something you don't want to forget to do, so. All right, so the front arms are on. Uh, went ahead and put on the bumper, uh, torqued all the uh, all the castle nuts, torqued the um, A-arm bolts, the bumper bolts, and the uh, tie rod bolts. All that's torqued. Um, I'm not putting a sway bar on or an anti-sway bar, so that tab is just going to sit there unused. Um, I still got to put cotter pins under the, uh, you know, on the bottom of the castle nuts. Uh, and I'm going to squirt some grease in. But the axles are in, looks good. Uh, my hubs are gone at the powder coater right now. So the brake disc is just sitting there waiting for the hubs. And then I can put the big nut on the end of the cast, on the end of the axles. So, um, this is pretty much... Uh, buttoned up. I, I'm missing that grease zerk that I broke, so I'm gonna. Uh, that one's on order. I ordered it from Rocky Mountain. It should be here soon. And then, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the bodywork back on. I'm really excited to get this blue bodywork installed. Uh, so I'm gonna start with this headlight piece, and then uh, at least the front body I'll go ahead and put on because then I can put the cage on. So it's so really gonna start looking like a car here in the next few. Uh, next few videos I'm, I'm excited also those brake lines so the, the calipers are just laying in there for now I've got brake clamps and longer brake lines coming so those are just kind of going to be hanging loose until I get that stuff in as well so So the torque specs for those front bolts that go on the, or the front A-arm bolts are here. So it's 90 Newton meters for the eight A-arm bolts. And then here's the castle nut um, so I guess it's 120 Newton meters the first time and then you're supposed to back it off to 75 Newton meters and then put the castle nut in I think that's what that means I'm not 100% sure to be honest um, and both ball joints are the same 120 Newton meters for the top one and for the bottom one and then back here is the steering castle nut so the i'm using the aftermarket you know the weller racing steering knuckles so i got those instructions out it does not have a torque spec for their nut it is a lock nut and they do say to apply thread locker so i did that and i just torqued it to the factory spec which is 40 newton meters um so i i torqued all those and um, this is it. Front 
in excess designs long travel is installed now